But recently, they, they've been showing great character, like fighting back for the squad to win the game. And um, they must just now try to not concede every game early because that's becoming a new norm for them. Yeah, they concede yeah. early in the game and, and definitely they must just try and defend better in that sense or get a wake-up call much earlier than, than later, you understand? So, yeah, good results for this weekend. Nice, man, nice, man. Yeah, and, and on Saturday I had um, a military Kuna, um, but he didn't have much time because he had other obligations. You know, that guy's very busy. Um, but we had a nice chat. Yes. Um, we had a nice chat and uh, we had a few predictions and some of his predictions came through and some of it didn't come through. I have to get back to him on that. Um, we're going to chat about that. But let's head straight into the fixtures that happened this weekend. Um, let's see what we have. On, 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 on Sky Sports, what they have to share with us. So firstly... So that quality play that we used to experience in so many seasons ago at Tottenham. Yeah, man. Listen, an interesting fact um, from the, the Opta um, Stat um, Center. Gareth Bale has been directly involved in seven goals in his last four appearances for Tottenham in all competitions. Four goals and three assists. What a flashback. That, that's really some nice stats to look at, right? Yes. Definitely so like, over the... Yes. Yeah, like I said, Lucas Moura is also getting um, into the goals again. Um, Mourinho is also giving Dele Ali some more game time. Do you think Mourinho is starting to build something there? As we look at the, the, the map for, for the games, we had Kane, um, Moura, we had Son, Hoiberg, Ndombele... Um, Davidson Sanchez, Alderweire, um, Serge Regulon, and Serge Aurier. I think really, man, those two um, 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 fullbacks that they have, Regulon and Serge Aurier, those are two quality players, man. Yes. Um, look, the only problem with Tottenham Hotspurs is they have a fighting um, um, front line. The guys up front, but their defense is, has been the reason why they've been failing to win games um, guys like um, Derek, um, what's his name? The Derek uh, Dyer, Dyer, sorry, Derek Dyer, Dyer yeah. and Eric Dyer and um, Aldevaro. Regulon has been a, a good player for them ever since signing for them. Um, Oria is now and then he's on and off, but the only lack in defense is um, to have a solid defender like a central defender, but. Otherwise, the team looks solid and the midfield looks great with Holberg being in the middle and Lucas Moura providing to Son and Kane and Gareth Bale. And yeah, it's good to, to also see Dele Ali starting for Tottenham Hotspur after there's been speculations and rumours that he's heading towards um, PSG. Yeah, man. Listen, um, some great analysis there. Thank you, Roderick, on the Tottenham game. Um, we're going to head straight into the next one. Liverpool um, getting back to winning ways. As we can see, Liverpool versus Sheffield United. Um, yeah, just, just to touch on that. Sheffield United, man, they are relegation um, they are, they are relegation contenders this season. I don't know what happened. Last season, they were the team to beat. I thought they were going to step up this season and move forward from that. But this season, they just fell flat. And I think personally, to start off with, I, didn't, I don't think Sheffield strengthened in the transfer window. Yeah, um, look, Sheffield United last season, they were quality, they were up there, they weren't fighting for an allegation battle. This season, they've just been poor besides having um, shocking results at Old Trafford where they won. Um, Liverpool, definitely, everybody was betting on Liverpool to win this game because after being um, in such a poor form, um, losing, I think they lost five or six games. They needed they needed to get this this, this three points um, away in order to to boost the, the chances for top four position. So that was expected from Liverpool, although they are having a long list of injuries. But the players that they had um, took the opportunity and they performed. So they. That gave them a, a great win away against Sheffield United. Yeah, man. Listen, and also in the Champions League, um, in the week, 
they really performed well. And Salah is starting to fire again. Um, it just looks like Liverpool is starting to get the cohesion back, if I could say that. Um, Van Dijk is also um, strengthening very, very, very nicely. I think we should see Van Dijk somewhere in the end of this month. Um, what, what, what big loss do you think Liverpool felt when they, when they lost Van Dijk? Do you think that um, losing Van Dijk is a part of the run of form? Um, most people would say yes because he's the he's the leader of the of the backs there, the um, playing backstop, and as a defender, he made sure there's no goals being conceded at the back. You you know you feel safe when you have a player like that, knowing um, if there's a counter attack or if there's any player that's going to attack, Virgil van Dijk is going to make sure that he's going to stop the ball, block the ball. And make it uh, make a pass towards the midfield or hit the ball straight up to the front players. That is what he's been doing last season, uh, multiple times. We he just he would even assist from 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 his goalkeeper's line all the way to Salah or Mane. So they must have quality. Definitely, that is one of the reasons why they've been lacking in defence. So. Having a player out like that means you you will lose games. You will have um, other teams thinking, okay, now we can strike at these guys. They don't have those strong quality defenders at the back. So yeah, that it definitely is one of the main reasons why they are performing how they perform nowadays. Cool man, very true, very true. Um, and Dyke is a big player, really. Um, except for his defensive qualities except for the way how he reads the game he has a certain turn of pace on him which um, a lot of yes. defenders doesn't have and um, he still has a lot of years in him so Liverpool really they should look after this man um, how yes. Liverpool have returned yes. to winning ways Curtis Jones was the one um, scoring the opening goal for them how do you rate this boy out of 10 Curtis Jones what do you think his progression was like this season I would say a lot of a lot of uh, fans wouldn't recognize Curtis Jones or wouldn't know him from from the passes or because there's like so many highly rated youngsters out there. But definitely, he's proving his point in the squad that now he's starting. Klopp is letting him play now. Almost every game is in the starting lineup. So um, yeah, he's got a bright future at Liverpool. So he's been showing his quality on the pitch as well, and um, he missed a few chances in numerous games now. But he's capitalising more and more now, going um, towards the end of the season. So yeah, he's a great prospect for Liverpool, and they must just keep hold of the young stars. Definitely a good player. Yeah, listen, man, I I, I really like Curtis Jones from what I've seen, what he can do for Liverpool. And I just hope that his progression goes forward and that he could also turn up like, um, what's the guy's name, Alexander-Arnold? Oh, no, yes, no, Alexander. Alexander-Arnold, yeah. He could also turn up because Alexander-Arnold came from the Liverpool Academy, the same as him. And I, I just think that um, yes. he has the, the right qualities to play for Liverpool. Um, he should just stick in there, fight for his spot and, and keep consistent. Let's head into the big game that I know you want to talk about, that would light up your life, that's making you so happy, <laughs> the Arsenal versus Leicester game. So, man, in a nutshell, how do you rate the performance of the guys over the 90 minutes? Over the 90 minutes, I'm just happy that they kept on fighting for, for the three points and the most shocking thing that happened during the game was the two players that we all criticized for a while now. One is Nicolas Pepe and William. Yeah. Normally, those are the two players that you will hit back at and say, uh, these guys have been poor every game. They, The one's got a hefty price tag on his head. The other one, you expected so much coming from Chelsea and... and being a great player there, and he hasn't been performing since the start of the season. So, yeah, great. They've been showing great quality yesterday. They were showing what they're capable of, and we were all shocked as Arsenal fans seeing these two players. You would normally expect the the big, the big, bigger players like Lacazette or um, Martin Odegaard or those players to, to come to the front and, and win the game for us, but 
wow. I can just say wow to those two players. They really deserve... Um, I think both of them deserve man of the match because they were playing great. But uh, the main guy, I think, that worked his socks off was Granit Xhaka. He covered a lot of distance and he made a lot of um, good passes. But yeah, the only the only bad thing was conceding an early goal, like I said early on. That's something that Arsenal need to work on. But yeah, it was a great win on a big uh, a big team that's currently third on the log. Um, Leicester on the day, I mean, they had injuries, but it was only one injury, which is Madison. You can't yeah. really say they had injuries, but Madison is a is a player that can make a difference. But at the end of the day, you are playing for Leicester City, so you must have a backup like the way Arsenal, Man City, those teams have. So, yeah, um, Leicester City were a bit poor on the day, and we, we made sure we take our chances to, to win the game, and we, which we did. Yeah, listen, man, you have to be clinical on the day. And also, um, there's no excuses. We have to cope with, with injuries, the same as Leicester and every other team. So um, I don't accept any excuses. Um, if, if I look yeah. at the stats, um, Arsenal had the majority of the ball. Um, they had more shots on target. Their passing accuracy was better. Um, they clear-cut chances. They had more corners. Um, yeah, the tackles they won were better. And yeah, in general... Arsenal had a better performance um, than, than, yes. than Leicester. Um, Jamie, Jamie Vardy was in, in David Luiz's pocket the whole time. Um, Jamie yes, Vardy didn't get any sniff at the ball. But this guy, I just want to I just want to make mention of this guy, David Luiz. Man, I don't know what yeah. to think of. I don't know what to think of this guy. One one game is the is the villain, other game is the hero. One game is the villain, other game is the hero. It's almost like Arsenal. We get the run of form, yeah. where we get a, a lot of nice games, and then after that we just fall flat again. What do you think um, is the reason for this inconsistencies in this player and also in Arsenal? I've always said since since David Luiz signed for Arsenal, he's a secret agent. He's been the guy that's been giving points away and then you get the one game where he's performing. He's a he's a good leader, but end of the day, I don't rate David Luiz as being one of the favorite players for an Arsenal fan or so. But obviously Arteta needs that experience at the back. He needs that leadership. Um there's been rumors that they're gonna extend his contract again. So it's gonna be another year of ups and downs defensively. But, um, him and Pablo, him and Pablo Murray, they had a very good game yesterday. I like the way Pablo Murray also settled in in that in that position. And um, yeah, brilliant performance by David Luiz yesterday. Listen, man, um, the, uh, I just want to touch on William. The William that turned up yesterday was the William that we used to seeing in a Chelsea set. Listen, man, I couldn't believe what I was seeing from William. I couldn't believe the way he was moving the ball the way he was applying himself on the field, the quality of thinking, his decision-making. Um, yeah, a lot of things were really bright about William. And that we saw also in the game in the, in the, in the Europa League. When he came on, he really changed the game. And that's what we want to see from a guy like William. That's why he was brought in, to show the youngsters how to change the game, how to be dynamic, how to hit the ground running. And um, I just wish the best going forward for William. No, I, I totally agree with you, Derek. Um, William is, like we all know, he's a quality player. Watching the days when he played for Chelsea, he was brilliant. Obviously, um, last week also, he mentioned again, he loves Chelsea that much. If only they could have just given him that three-year contract. So, yeah, he was, he was a Chelsea man. And obviously, watching all his performances, the way he would assist the balls, his free kicks, um, it reminded me a lot when when um, he assisted yesterday to David Luiz on that goal. That's the type of Chelsea way which they did way back. Him and David Luiz with the free kicks and assisting the guy. So his performance yesterday, if he can just bring that more and more to the to the couple of few games that we have left in the in the league, that would be brilliant for Arsenal, definitely. Very true, man. Very true. And then the last game we're going to look at, Roderick, is um, the boring, boring game um, of last night um, for the neutral. Yeah. Because for me, it was a very boring game. Um, I almost fell asleep. Um, okay. But I just want to see if we can listen to what 
only had to say um, about the VAR decisions and about the decisions that didn't go their way. So let's just quickly listen to, to the Manchester United manager. Is the sound clear by you, Robert? Yes, I can hear. So, Rodrik, here we have the Manchester United uh, manager. What do you make of that press conference, man? Um, I think um, what Ole said, like, they were looking as the squad. They played well. They looked fit. They were looking brilliantly playing in that game. But obviously, um, that decision, I mean, VAR is inconsistent this season. As For me, as a as an Arsenal fan, I felt like, okay, this is now your turn to... They have a disallowed decision because yesterday there was also a decision um, that was disallowed when they tackled um, Nicholas Pepe in the box elements and it was not given. So from a, from a football perspective, uh, I'm not a big fan of VAR, but definitely that cost United also the game because we all know if they would have got that penalty, then Bruno Fernandes is going to bury that goal. Um, and then United's going to be taking a lead 1-0. But I think it's a fee. it was a fee game. Um, Ole, Ole wanted, like he said, he wants more from his players week in and out. So going going now, how many games is left? A couple of games. United needs to just be consistent. Like their waveform has been brilliant. So they need to, in, in order for them to catch up with Man City, they have to definitely win most of the games now. Um, which will definitely um, put them in a position to be a uh, title contender or to fight for the league. But as we all know, 12 points apart, Manchester, Manchester City current, um, the current form, I don't think there's anyone that's going to catch up with them currently on top of me, but 12 points clear, definitely. Listen, man, a, a stat that popped up um, about Manchester United is they never score against the big teams. So, um, yes. that is when Manchester United thrust 6 1 by Tottenham at the start of October, it was a woeful defending under scrutiny. 
five months on, and perhaps the greater curiosity is that Bruno Fernandez's early penalty is still the, the only Premier League goal that they scored against the top six. That must be worrying for, for Manchester United. Um, and is you, if you look at this defensive um, map here by, 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 by Oli, defensive sol- yes. solidarity has, has been restored. So against Tottenham, they lost 6 1. Chelsea drew 0 0. Arsenal, they lost 1 0. And then Manchester City, they drew. Liverpool, they drew. They drew against Arsenal again. And now, yesterday, against Chelsea. That, that must be worrying for Manchester United fans. It is. Um, definitely, it's the games that you as a supporter, you want your team to win because you know it's the top teams. So, in order to win league titles or to win a league, you need to win these games, whether you're home or away. That's why I, I go back to Man City again. They've been proving this season they go to the bigger teams and they win these games, no matter whether it's 1 0 or it could be 5 0 as well. So that's a problem with Man United against against the teams that are like not as big teams mentioned as big teams that win those games. But you need to you need to perform on the bigger stage of, of, of the game as well. You need to win these big games in order to 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 go for the title. Yeah, no man, that that is that is very true. That is very true. Um, I think Manchester United is still two players off of um, challenging for the title but but as i can see the the stats and the curve it is definitely going upwards it is upwards since last season already so um yeah i think manchester united is heading into the right direction listen Roderick, man thank you very much it was a pleasure again having you on the show again um sharing your knowledge with us um, on football and all these sort of related matters um, we're going to be covering maybe in the week another show for the, the games that yes. is coming, that's going to be coming. And then also, I would like us to do over the weekend um, the rumours, the, the, the Premier League rumours that's been flying around, um, which players can go to where, and then we'll see each other again. Is there any last messages you would yes. like to share with the Soccer Colored Star fans across the world? Um, guys, always be tuned into our show. Um, subscribe also. Um, we will always be having videos available and join our page on Facebook as well, as well as on Instagram. We will highly appreciate it if you guys become one of our, our brand, our fans, our members. Um, we would really appreciate your, su- your support. And going further, guys, um, yeah, be safe and, and take care of one another. And make sure you guys are masked up and sanitized. Um, yeah, many love from the Arsenal fans. Um, good win to us. And but that's football. Next week it could be a different story. But yeah, it has been a good weekend of football. Thank you very much, Roderick. Always a pleasure having you on the show, man. Guys, um, as yes. you said, like, subscribe, share. You know what to do. We don't need to tell you what to do. Please like, subscribe, share with all you other people um, across the country. I would like to. Um, thank everyone across the world for watching our show and supporting us. Um, as Roderick said, please subscribe to the show. This is Aztec Soccer Color Style. 